between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we have it, we have footage of this. All right, so here we are. So the sun, this is a NASA image. The sun is inside this disc here. This black thing blots out the light of the sun because otherwise it would totally wash out the whole image. So we blot out the light of the sun, but still show you where the, where the sun is. These are normal explosions that occur in the sun every, not every day, but often. We can monitor these explosions as never before, but just because we can tell you they're happening, doesn't mean they're happening more. You got that? Okay. <laughs> just because you know they're happening, the comet is here. Right? And if my GIF works, you will see the comet come in, <laughs> hook around the back side of the sun, and this comet is like, <laughs> and poof, it disappears, right? A reminder that comets and stars don't mix. All right, here we go. Okay? Again, those explosions happen all the time. Here comes the comet. It's coming in towards the sun. Check it out. Okay, you see its orbit is curving. All right, you're gonna see it come out the other side. <laughs> Keep watching it. Keep watching it. So that's all still moving strong. And I gotta talk about the Higgs boats on the God particle. This is cool. If, if you if you were gonna be a particle, you wanna be, right? You grant mass to other particles that go by. That's cool. Okay? Grants mass. <laughs> uh, there's a friend of mine who has as his Twitter handle the science comedian. A, he has more walk into a bar jokes. Like a photon checks into a hotel. The reception desk said, Do you have any luggage? No, I'm traveling light. Okay. He's got tons of luggage, right? Got to look. A Higgs boson walks into a church. The priest says, sorry, we don't allow Higgs bosons in the church. He's going to say, but without me, you can't have mass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow on Twitter to 
science community. Uh, you know, guy, a friend of mine. Uh, so they found this sucker, this particle. Uh, this is like the largest piece of hardware ever built. This is one little section of the, the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Oh, by the way, we would have had this in the United States in the 1990s. The superconducting super collider was three times more powerful than this one in Switzerland. We might have discovered the Higgs boson. But Congress says no. Cut the budget to zero, and the center of mass of particle physics moves to Europe. One of the signs that we are fading. atmosphere. So that's en route, and that should be arriving shortly. Watch that space. We really did land an SUV-sized rover on Mars. It is still there. It is still roving. It is, it is a mobile laboratory, and it, is, it was a stunning engineering achievement to plunk this thing down exactly where we needed it. And so we are all over Mars right now. We're on Mars so often that we can actually see one of Mars' moons eclipse the sun. This is Phobos eclipsing the sun as viewed from the Martian surface. And you can see the shape of Phobos is not, that circle is the surface of the sun. Phobos is like a, looks like a potato. <laughs> it's not big enough to be round. So it really doesn't just, we shouldn't even call it a moon. <laughs> it's like a dozen miles, 15 miles across, something like that, with Phobos and Deimos. One is like a dozen miles, the other is, you know, a little bit more than that. It's not, it's not big enough for its own gravity to make it as a, even Pluto has enough gravity to become a sphere. <laughs> Pluto's looking at this and saying, ah, Anyhow, Mars is uh, too much. We ask, is there life on Mars? That's what, that, that's what we ask. Well, I have the first photo <coughs> taken by the Curiosity robot, but NASA didn't release it. But I got connections. <laughs> Me and NASA. <laughs> Now, this one they would not release to the public, and I'm still trying to find out why, because it could be because it was desolate, you know? And they're worried that if there's nothing there... No. <laughs> the day we colonize Mars, <laughs> the day after there's going to be a McDonald's. You know this. You know this. Just so you know. Okay? Do you know how many hamburgers they've sold? <laughs> they've lost count. They don't even keep it. I'm old enough to remember they would, there was a counter on the, on the sign. 10 billion, 50, and then, then Carl Sagan came along and they said, hey, we like that. Billions and billions of hamburgers. That's what we do. So they've sold more than 100 billion hamburgers. Now, I can't, because I, I do this sort of thing, I just calculated how many hamburgers that is. I mean, I, yes, that's 100 billion hamburgers, yes. But if you lay them end to end, how far would it go? It could go around the earth. 52 times. <laughs> then with what's left over, you could stack them. 
But what's left over? You can make a stack from Earth to the moon and back with your hundred million hammer. <clears throat> this is terrifying news to cows. <laughs> Actually, it's probably like three cows. It's not a very big patty inside there. Oh, that's a Who here likes the girls' hair? Okay, so, and you know that the most of everyone else is just lying. <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, there's some people who want to go to Mars one way. Okay. I, I'm trying to figure out whether these people are crazy or not. I haven't. So, uh, an entrepreneur wants to create a permanent human colony of four people, sending them one way. Kind of like Pilgrim style, you know? They figure if you go one way, you're going to be really resourceful on the other side. But I, this is. I don't, I don't believe, I, I hope they succeed. I, I don't, I'm not trying to get in their way. I'm just trying to get real, all right? When the pilgrims landed in America, they could breathe the air, right? They could eat the fruit on the bushes. They could repair their ship from the wood in the trees. I don't know what... And so, if you're gonna live on Mars, they're gonna have to create a hab, a habitat module, which would then be just like Earth. 